up until now, I've been giving you the pieces and we've been putting them together. What we're gonna look at now is a really important skill for calculus. And that's taking the look at a result and being able to break it apart into pieces, to be able to decompose this. I'm gonna view this function h of x as being a composition of two functions, f of x and g of x. And we're gonna find those two functions so that we can write h of x as this composition f of g of x. Now I wanna just explain the directions a little bit. I specify to find two non-identity functions. Remember the identity function is f of x just equals x. That's the function where you plug something in and you get it right back out. Now, if I used f being the identity function, then I could just let g of x be x cubed minus three. I could just copy this function and compose it with the identity function. Because then, when I did f of g of x, I'd plug x into g to get x cubed minus three. I'd plug in x cubed minus three to the identity function and I'd get identically what I plugged in. So we're looking for something a little bit more interesting than that. So essentially those directions say don't take the cheap way out. So what I wanna do is think of each function as doing something. So if I were evaluating h, I can see that I'm basically doing two things. I'm gonna cube x and then I'm gonna subtract two. And I'm doing them in that order. Now if you look at f of g of x, x is here, the first thing I'm doing is g. So I want g the to be the function that tells me to cube things. So g of x is just the cubing function. Okay. Then I want to subtract 2. So I want f to be the function that tells me to subtract 2. But the important thing here is that I need to remember to just use x as a placeholder for my input. All I'm doing in my second step is subtracting 2 from whatever I have. So I'm just using x as a placeholder for the input. Notice now when I look at f of g of x, that becomes f of x cubed. So that has me put an x cubed in that input position so that I'm subtracting 2 from x cubed. If I tried to make f of x be x cubed minus 2, when I plugged in x cubed, I'd have to cube that again. I don't want to do that. So with each of these pieces, we're just using x as a placeholder for the input. Okay, let's try another example. Same directions. Let's try k of x equals the square root of x plus 1 over x minus 2. Now that looks kind of complicated because I've got this fraction going on here. But one thing that I want to point out is that that's the same thing. So I probably want this entire fraction to be the same, part of the same function. Because once I do whatever the first function does, I'm changing my input. So I start with an x, I do some stuff to x, okay, but then whatever that result is, that's what I'm going to plug into the next function. So whenever I see the same variable expression showing up in two different places, I can be pretty confident that I want those two things to be parts of the same function. So it looks like what we're doing is we're forming this fraction and then we're taking the square root. So I'm going to just write it that way. Form the fraction, take the square root. Now again, with this notation, g is what we're doing first. So g of x would just be x plus 1 over x minus 2. It's a little bit more complicated than the initial step we had the last time. And then f of x, what do I do to that? I take the square root. Again, just using x as a placeholder for my input, once I make that input be g of x, this is what I'll be plugging in to take the square root of. All right, let's do one more example together. 
let's suppose I had O J of X equaling X squared plus five all under the cube root. Now if I look at this, I'm actually doing three things. I'm squaring x, then I'm adding 5, then I'm taking the cube root. Square. Add 5. Take the cube root. So I could, if I wanted to, easily write this as a composition of three functions, where the first function would be the squaring function, the second would be the function that tells me to add 5, and the third function would be the function that tells me to take the cube root. But that's not what the directions say. The directions say to write this as a composition of two functions. So there's definitely more than one choice, but what I'm going to have to do if I want to accomplish three things is one of my functions is going to have to accomplish two of those things, and the second function will accomplish just one of those things. So I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to let my first function, which is going to be the g function, let's let that be g of x equals x squared plus 5. That accomplishes these first two things. And then I could let f of x be the cube root function using x as a placeholder for my input. Another perfectly acceptable option would be to let g of x just be x squared. So g of x just does the first thing, and then I'd have to let f of x take the cube root of x plus 5. So that would accomplish the adding 5 and then taking the cube root of the result. Either of those would be perfectly acceptable. Okay, I'm going to just write a couple up here on the board for you folks to try on your own. Give those a shot and then tune back in. Let's go with h of x equals 1 over x plus 5, and k of x equals x squared plus 3 cubed. Okay, excellent. Give those a shot, then tune back in. For h of x, it looks like I'm doing two things. I'm adding 5, and I'm taking the reciprocal. And since the 5 is in the denominator, I've got to make sure that I add the 5 first, add the five first, and then take the reciprocal, so that I'm taking the reciprocal, not just of x, but of the whole thing, the result of adding 5 to x. So I would let g of x be x plus 5, and f of x would be the reciprocal function. Again, x is just a placeholder. Once I plug in g of x to f, the thing I'll be taking the reciprocal of will be x plus 5. All right, with k of x, this is another one where I'm actually doing three things. I'm squaring x, I'm adding 3, and I'm cubing. So I've got square add 3, and then cube. So 1 of f or g is going to have to do more than one thing. I think the simplest thing to do, since I've got the x squared plus 3 in parentheses, is to simply let g of x be that quantity that's inside parentheses that does those first two things. And then I could let f of x be the cubing function. But another perfectly acceptable option would have been to let g of x be x squared, and then f of x would be x plus 3 cubed. Do make sure that you're adding the 3 before you're cubing, because that was the order in which we were doing things with this function.